Uh, good evening, everyone. We will be beginning uh, in two to three minutes. We are just waiting for uh, some other participants to join us. Thank you. I hope it's visible to all. Yeah. Okay. So, um, broadly, our pro program in uh, energy for cooling, like I mentioned, has been in the realm of sustainable energy and how sustainable energy itself can be uh, utilized as a means to democratize access to cooling, uh, by which uh, we usually uh, uh, talk about access from the perspective of not just physical access, but also financing, inclusivity public, from, from a policy perspective. And uh, um, uh, the Catalyze Tech initiative itself is to look at uh, propagating, kickstarting, and catalyzing uh, initiatives in uh, sectors. And uh, again, with this challenge focused on cooling itself. Um, the work that we started in cooling actually began with the indication of how heat and heat stress linked to climate change has been impacting communities. And um, broadly, if you see in the last few years itself, uh, climate change has been only exacerbating conditions on the ground further. Uh, beyond which you see um, effects on uh, sectors itself, where in health and immunization, uh, during COVID-19, uh, the amount of wastage and expiry that you were seeing that was happening in um, uh, vaccine management and vaccine sort of storage and transportation and the losses that we were observing uh, was because of the lack of cooling infrastructure uh, to a certain uh, degree. Um, and what kinds of solutions do you need to sort of uh, evolve uh, to be able to create access from a sort of nodal point to communities at the last mile became a very big challenge um, on the implementation for, of governments, philanthropies, organizations. Um, there is a whole component of uh, the fact that there's a vast shortage of coal storages in a country like India itself, where agriculture is a backbone of uh, in most of the industries, where you then see uh, both wastage and then loss of income playing a big role. Um, and again, the question of access coming into play where you're talking about inequality um, in how people are able to access it. You have your Mondays, you have your uh, centralized coal storage systems, uh, which sort of increase the transactional costs uh, associated with access uh, for many communities um, um, and farmers in general, which sort of um, uh, grows uh, losses on the ground for communities itself. Um, and the last piece being, um, there are a lot of uh, studies that link comfort conditions within living spaces and working spaces to incomes and productivity levels in families. And if you had to sort of look at... Um, just, I mean, now in February itself, the summer months uh, and how it's not even a summer month and it's extremely hot in certain contexts in North Karnataka, here in Bangalore, um, in Ahmedabad, in the north of India. And uh, for us, it becomes very important to be not just looking at how do you look at building design and building implementation in a country like ours, but also um, how do you optimize it for the uh, to make energy accessible and efficient in these spaces for active cooling itself? Um, so this is um, a broad context of why this challenge and what is it that Selco Foundation is looking to and seeking for and partners to be able to address this. Um, the spectrum of cooling is a sort of, uh, it's more of a guide for us to be able to look at uh, the different kinds of maps and channels for cooling that is accessible in a, a country like India or rather globally. Um, we have both passive and active te technologies that sort of enable these conditions for space cooling, for application cooling. Um, we've been able to also bifurcate and hopefully this could be a, a, a place that you could see yourself fit into, which is either saying that I'm looking at building materials or construction technologies. Um, I'm looking at sort of active uh, solutions for ventilation, cooling, exhaust um, for space design uh, or active sort of cooling applications itself and within the spectrum of, of 
um, sort of agriculture or other uh, produce products itself, uh, what kind of sort of application-based schoolings are possible. And for us, I think also what's interesting is to be able to look at, again, the key question of access itself, where uh, is it portable? Is it sort of packageable in a manner that could be accessed at the last mile for a riverine uh, community, uh, for a, a family in the sort of living in the uh, the Himalayas? So what does it mean from an access perspective to create sort of cold chain um, access for communities itself? Um, the other part of why this challenge is also designed as a program design is for us to look at uh, access to cooling. We say that, uh, or rather we believe that the systems approach is the is very key to sort of creating this access uh, itself, by which you mean that, yes, you are talking about technologies and building design um, as a key innovation that is required to sort of catalyze change on the ground, but there are certain linkages such and kinds of uh, financing, policy, um, uh, inclusivity, and capacity building uh, that is required to sort of enable uh, something to be adopted at a scale. Um, and uh, when we are sort of seeking proposals as part of this program, we are looking to understand how um, each of these applications are thinking also from a systems perspective. So when, uh, I mean, if I am an entrepreneur looking at sort of cold chain in a new state or a new geography or a new region, um, then what? Who are, who are the system players or ecosystem players uh, and stakeholders that I am engaging with? Uh, and it would be good to sort of detail those out um, as part of the whole sort of program um, that you would be submitting as part of the challenge. Um, I will maybe just go through some examples uh, of work that has happened in the past. Um, sorry. Yeah. So uh, one of the examples in uh, cooling for agriculture is your uh, decentralized cold storage systems. I think a lot of the work when we were observing in the beginning was um, a, uh, you have producer groups, uh, communities uh, that were dependent a lot on, uh, you know, sort of how do you sort of manage systems of uh, harvest, manage systems of what crops do you grow in alignment to what the market rates are and what the sort of uh, climatic conditions are. There's a lot of sort of dependencies on that system itself, uh, which would end up with communities not being able to necessarily make a profit out, out of a crop cycle itself. So for us, uh, a cold storage system, a very decentralized cold storage system, which was your Five metric ton, 10 metric ton, 15 metric ton were very critical to be able to um, deploy uh, solutions to the communities that made them profitable to a certain degree, or at least make a break even on their, um, you know, uh, expenditures made in har in uh, agriculture itself. And these are some of the stakeholders that you, uh, you could be working with and partnering with to be able to, you know, create access and enable conditions for agriculture, uh, or sorry, for uh, cooling solutions for uh, poor farmers. And uh, some examples that, you know, um, that we have seen that have worked are with women farmer groups that we work in Odisha and Jharkhand, where, where, you know, a lot of the transactional cost is what is sort of saved and also the ability to manage and sell uh, your produce on your, uh, with complete agency um, becomes very critical over here. And sort of looking at investments from Nanabad or from a policy sort, of policy sort of player coming in uh, where you can not just uh, own the asset but also sort of borrow against it um, as a business um, and these kinds of sort of things became very critical for us and a, a lot of the work that we did with our partners over there was on looking at training modules for um, setting up businesses for uh, maintenance and operations of these sort of facilities. Um, pulling for health, as I already mentioned, our uh, criticality has been in looking at different kinds of deployment measures for um, health, uh, sorry, for vaccination itself. And that could be, you know, a, a hilly terrain and having sort of a portable vaccine carrier that plays a role, uh, having a fixed sort of uh, um, refrigeration system at a health facility, being able to deploy it in different kinds of means and measures like, you know, mobile van or a, a you know boat clinic that you see and these are sort of ways of deployment that are very critical for health in cooling itself um and lastly comfort a lot of the uh, projects and programs that we integrate with uh, all of the infrastructure that the poor communities um that we uh, engage with inhabit have some of these issues around um, um increased air pollution uh, uh, heat conditions uh, dependency on you know uh, energy guzzling sort of means of keeping your space 
cool. And there are many parts to it. One being the building and design itself, the materials that you use, um, and obviously um, what kind of energy access do you have? And then how do you sort of create applications for cooling that are sustainable and don't sort of eat up on my um, recurring costs, so to say. And these are some of the solutions that we have seen on the ground, which is saying that you take a very simple, small solution like a garage and you look at sort of insulating it and improving it, uh, augmenting it with sort of energy and creating like an application, like a cooler that can be deployed, um, you know, within that space itself, um, all the way up to hospitals and, you know, uh, um, hospitals and sort of schools where you're able to then deploy um, larger uh, active cooling sort of applications for uh, both heating and cooling, which could be something that we could look at as part of this program. Um, and of course, building components itself, like in the example of cool roofing, where we've worked with different kinds of partners and players and vendors and, um, you know, manufacturers to be able to look at different types of solutions for cooling itself. So whether you are a uh, enterprise with a product focus or you're sort of an uh, entity looking to sort of bring together, um, you know, solutions for communities itself. There are sort of like a myriad ways that you could look at um, sort of creating a proposal for cooling itself. Um, so I think I'll pause over here um, and we'll open the floor for questions right now. Thank you, Nirmita. Um, so as Nirmita mentioned earlier, I mean, the idea of creating this webinar was uh, not for mass range, but basically people who are interested in applying for this challenge by means of which we are trying to identify new partners, new solutions, new processes uh, across the cooling uh, uh, process, across the cooling program or cooling as a thematic across these four larger themes which we have seen or we have talked about, one is agri food wastage or supply chain. Second is on uh, field spaces, environment, both for working spaces in agri, on field, uh, for health, uh, for small businesses in heat stress area and cold stress area and so on. Uh, for personal cooling itself, for people who are kind of working in uh, high uh, uh, temperate regions, uh, be it positive, negative, uh, and then in terms of when they are working in those conditions, what kind of personal cooling uh, solutions can be there and processes can be there. And at the health, uh, again, when we talk about health, generally vaccines come into our mind. But again, across the health value chain, across the health supply chain, where all cooling can be part of it. Uh, so we try to kind of uh, show examples of certain uh, solutions which, which we have worked on. But we know, I mean, all of you come from the sector and have worked in that uh, and would be uh, through this challenge, we are kind of open to learn more and see more solutions which are coming up uh, to be able to kind of work with us and then scale it further. So this is a mean to kind of create that uh, uh, entry or platform to kind of work together uh, in this thematic. Uh, just a background of Selco, if it's not uh, something which everyone knows, I mean, we are not for profit and then have been working in the sector from, uh, I mean, we started in 2010. Our teams are such that, that we look at innovation and scale programs and uh, our kind of, our teams are looking at uh, livelihoods uh, and health specifically, both at innovation and scale level. And in uh, livelihoods also, we look at agri and allied, we look at micro businesses, which are basically small businesses like, like petty shops, food processing and so on. Uh, and uh, arts and crafts. In health, we have an innovation team and a scale team. And then there are certain thematics which cut across, like energy definitely cuts across all of them. Built environment and built space cut across all of them. Efficient technology and solution cuts across all of them. Uh, and we also have an incubation program. So with all the pieces, what Selco does is try to work on strengthening the ecosystem for a solution. And we do this all by means of partnering with a lot of organizations, partnering with a lot of uh, uh, enterprises, organization, individuals, like all of you were in this uh, webinars come meeting which we are having right now. Um, again, so this was all the information 
information which we can provide at this level uh, related to this uh, particular challenge which we have launched. We are looking forward to more applications and we are trying to kind of move it in rolling basis. Uh, we have as a process internally also looking at all the applications and then within three days, our internal committee is uh, looking at application and we'll be soon sending uh, some decks which can be kind of made for the selected applicant for the next step. Uh, once those decks are sent at any point of time, do reach out to us, our team, uh, and then we'll be able to kind of cater to any uh, questions or queries which you may uh, or might have in future uh, related to your application. Um, and uh, there will also be, a, uh, by the third, fourth week of March, we'll also have a panel, uh, uh, a jury sort of, because it's a process, we have to kind of follow that process, a jury sort of uh, panel where basically we will request you all to join online, whoever have been selected at that point of time to kind of present using the same tech which will be kind of uh, sending it to you. What our team can do is work with you on kind of creating that tech and making it more uh, um, strong for the context of the challenge which we have right now. Again, this is just one platform. We are uh, really happy and then eager to know each one of you. Uh, we already have worked with a few of you before uh, to kind of create a partnership in which how we can kind of, you know, uh, reach to the larger goals, which both the organizations and both the parties are kind of looking at. Um, having said that, I'll pause here. Um, if there are any queries uh, uh, from any one of you uh, related to application, timeline, what do we consider, uh, be it small or big, please do kind of ping and let us know. Uh, you can also kind of just switch, uh, switch on your videos and then unmute yourselves and then speak about it right now. Uh, if needed, I, I think the uh, challenge when we rolled it out, there is also an email ID. You can also reach out to us through that and we'll be able to kind of cater to your queries one-on-one -on -one if it's required. Uh, but uh, the idea of kind of creating this webinar was to also kind of, yeah, just kind of give a context and then take any questions. Yes, I'll, uh, I have a couple of questions, so I'll just ask them and then you can. Uh, one is uh, you know, the title of the you know, program says SPG7, which is yeah. Access to Energy. Yeah. And uh, so I just wanted to understand whether uh, you're looking specifically for cooling systems which run on clean energy. Is that the idea or that? Secondly, uh, uh, I understand uh, if I understand it correctly that you're looking uh, to identify solutions which might be suitable for these different applications uh, you listed. Uh, and what is the program structure after that uh, for us as an organization, as a startup? Uh, what does it entail after that? So I got two of them, right? I, if I miss any two kind of let me know at the later stage. So one, the first one was around SDG 7 and energy. Yes, I mean, that is something which Selco as an organization works on and then we bring that expertise if it's not there. That is something which is just like cooling is a cutting across theme. It, the solution which you will be providing or which you will be proposing, it might not have a direct energy link. It may also have a direct energy link. That is something which we can build on later on also. One of the lens which we look at is basically the sustainability of the solution which you are pro uh, uh, proposing. Ourselves internally, to be very honest and then transparent, we do look at if there is any link of energy directly or indirectly. But that will not kind of affect whether we kind of see the application through or not for this challenge. Energy is something which we can also kind of build in and bring in uh, to the overall uh, solution. And I, the also the other thing that I wanted to sort of add to that was that when we say SDG 7 as an approach, we look at it from a three-point uh, perspective. One is, of course, access to clean energy, which is which could be any means of uh, clean energy. But the second and the third piece being um, technologies that we adopt within the cooling space have to look at a perspective energy efficiency and optimization. So are you looking at augmenting certain kinds of, um, you know, um, practice? that are uh, high energy consumption or high fuel consumption? Are you looking at uh, uh, opportunities of improving sort of benchmarks for what cooling solutions need to have or energy uh, uh, consumption solutions um, need to be? So those are the three sort of uh, two prongs. And the third being obviously um, 
uh, SDG 7 is also how do you consume energy for us? So from an energy efficiency angle, we focus on the building design also. So the three sort of perspectives for us make SDG 7 uh, critically. But it would be good for us to also understand, Vishal, if you could talk to us a little bit about the solution that you have in mind and maybe we can contextualize it to the, um, you know, the solution itself or the program itself. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Uh, so we have a cooling system uh, which uh, cools to about 20 to 25 degrees Celsius uh, in most geographies, in most time of the year. Uh, and uh, it consumes uh, 75 to 80 percent less energy than uh, refrigeration to do that. Mm. So basically, less energy than an air conditioner would be for, the, for around the same temperature. Uh, in addition, it means, maintains high humidity. So we're using it for uh, temperature controlled storage of fruits and vegetables. So what that does is it increases the shelf life by three to four times yeah. uh, over keeping it at room yeah. temperature. And it decreases uh, weight loss because humidity is low. We have in the installations we have done so far, there are some completely solar powered installations as well. Uh, but you know, that of course increases the cost of the system. So we uh, uh, we, that's not the default, mm -hmm. so, um, but uh, from, you know, there is energy efficiency, um, so that, that part is there. Our system also does not use any refrigerants, uh, so refrigerants are high. Um, yeah. Uh, I think it's definitely completely aligned to what we're talking about, the energy efficiency angle as well as, you know, the impact that it has on sort of um, maybe changing the way we look at building or storage solutions. Exactly. The, the, the difference from a traditional uh, a cold storage solution is a cold storage typically means you know it's like like a giant refrigerator something which cools to two to four degrees Celsius. Yeah. Uh, we do not do that. Uh, many reasons, but essentially that's a lot more expensive, ten times more expensive than uh, doing what we do. So and, uh, then that just does not make sense for the vast majority of crops and most of it. So. If you could also address the other question about uh, yeah. what was the for us. So basically, uh, what we aim to do right now is, for example, when there are solutions which come in and then we kind of uh, uh, choose on certain solutions which we can work on specifically for, uh, under this platform, there will be, uh, we will also be asking in terms of if you don't have any kind of project pilot areas in mind. It can be direct implementations which you can propose uh, in the area of uh, work where you are doing. It needn't be kind of matching directly to the project sites where we are working on, where Selco directly has an implementation on, because we are more interested in learning. It can be a process which you might have already kind of documented, done, and then uh, which can be a larger learning for people. Process in the sense, for example, as Chali was saying, I mean, there are those large cold storages, but if we look at uh, the uses and applicability of these cold storage is larger challenges which uh, we hear and then we know is there across the world is on usability of it. We have a really good education business model of using cold storage for different uh, uh, crop types. So that is also something which we'll consider and it's a good learning and we we'll see how we can support that bit, how we can kind of make sure that we can try it out in our program areas and so. So it will be some kind of implementation come um, uh, uh, trying to kind of uh, take the technologies itself in our program areas or we can also support some of the program areas we are working on. The way we have structured the program moving forward is as I said direct implementation uh, definitely a partnership with Selco Foundation and all our partners and networks which gets open uh, across India and globe where we are working on uh, and uh, uh, we do, as I mentioned, has an incubation program. So we can also consider if both of us agree and then you uh, or any of the applicant who is interested in looking at that kind of incubation program needs to kind of, uh, uh, wants to kind of get into it, we can also separately talk about it, which will be over and above what we are discussing right now. Uh, for an NGO, for an individual, it's basically, again, we would then definitely would want to partner with you and work in the same community and use this pooling solution as a platform, as a means to kind of start a partnership and then start working in looking at energy and pooling across uh, all the work which we are doing. Uh, for an individual, definitely we uh, we, uh, we hope that we learn a lot from you. And then uh, if there is any solution which again helps in processes and technology, we would like to kind of then pilot it in all the other side areas where we are working. 
on our partners are working for. So these are the few ways which I can kind of help uh, uh, suggest uh, looking at the kind of work which we are doing and how we can move forward. Uh, I hope that answers it. But if there's anything specific, do uh, let us know, Vishal or anyone else, if you have any queries around this. Yeah, yeah that answers my question. Yes, I Yeah. Good evening, uh, Nirmit and Prashant. Thank you so much for that presentation. It's good. Uh, so I actually had thought of two questions and then during the discussion, a few more has come up. So I can oh. just ask my questions and then you can address it. Uh, one was uh, Urja uh, provides pay-per-use farming services. Uh, just to give you a background in currently in Uttar Pradesh and Bihar. Uh, and this includes schooling services as well, very similar to what uh, Tim Vishal was talking about, uh, you know, increasing shelf life of the produce and, you know, uh, enabling farmers to sell at a higher price at a later point of time, right, to so increase yeah. the income of the farmers, right. But uh, we are doing this as a for-profit organization. So my first question was, uh, is a for-profit organization eligible for this? Yeah. Uh, second, uh, we uh so there is three uh, three forms or the combination that you have talked about in the uh, in the you know advertisement uh, that we saw was direct implementation individual support and knowledge uh knowledge and technical support right so this is in addition to uh, the funding uh, that is uh, you know part of this application or separately if so then you know how do we access? Maybe uh, we are looking at something similar to what already you talked about in the presentation. So, uh, do we also uh, is it also possible to talk about in our proposal that uh, we are looking for uh, you know consultancy or a technical support to you know how do you enable uh, how do you increase the efficiency of the current systems that we have and you know do like something like a business model innovation kind no, of. No, sure. We are already working on uh and uh, you know so the third and the third part was uh about the next steps like what are the immediate uh next steps for this proposal uh i think from what we have read is uh 15th so is supposed to be the deadline but just wanted to know if that is what needs to be done by 15th and you know what are the next steps after that oh, sure Oh, thanks, Uncle, for all of them. Uh, answer to first two question: yes. Uh, uh, enterprise can apply. And as I mentioned, we also have a tech incubation program. So we look for more and more enterprises because we believe that the uh, enterprises who are developing solution or are coming from the grassroots is a way also to kind of understand the grassroots needs and then create that kind of business model which helps uh, larger communities to kind of come out of poverty or whatever, I mean, they need at that point of time. So 100% yes, enterprises can also apply for it. Uh, uh, the three modes of support which we have mentioned, direct implementation, uh, uh, mentorship or technical support and all, yes, it, it can be a combination of all. So it would be good to kind of mention that in the proposal, in the challenge document itself, because then we'll be able to kind of understand each of the need much more deeper when we'll be doing that one-on-one -on -one discussion uh, by the third week or fourth week of March. Uh, so yes, uh, it'd be good to kind of give a breakup of it and how one each aspect support uh, helps in the overall program uh, uh, of Urja when you are kind of working on. Uh, we have uh, now the next step, immediate next steps is the applications are coming. We have reviewed internally few of the applications. So the people who are moving to the next step, we'll reach out to everyone first, right? Reach out to everyone, whoever has applied, uh, kind of mentioning in terms of how we have seen it. Uh, we, to the people who are moving to the next step, Based on the internal committee, there will be a deck uh, given. That deck will be like, like a program proposal kind of deck, which will help us understand more of what you are proposing, why you are proposing, what was the background, and how it helps the overall program or project of, uh, in case of you, in case of you, it's basically Urja. Like how this support will help overall Urja. And then we are also kind of uh, looking for a, a lot of partnerships which you can kind of bring on because again how can we kind of support the ecosystem for this project will be one lens of looking at the program yeah okay uh, so by when uh, can we expect this deck uh, in so, case we are selected so, so, so these decks will be sending it latest we'll start sending it tonight itself 
So between tonight to this evening to next uh, early next week, Monday, Tuesday, it all will be sent to everyone. Uh, I know the application deadline is 15, so people who have applied till 15 will be considered. But we'll be still, it's okay to kind of send the text later on by, I think, 20th or okay. 21st of 22nd of March. Okay, so the deck can be shared till 22nd. That's what we yeah, can We will communicate it on the email. So as you get the deck, we'll give a five-day or six-day time for from the time of receiving a deck because different people might get it at different days. Got it. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, just, okay. I think uh, that's it. So based on the deck, then there would be a selection of the organizations and Next for the time. final pitch, which we are aiming to do it online. Yeah. Thank you so much. No, no problem. Yes. Hello. Yeah, so hi. Uh, so we are actually building a air conditioning technology uh, for comfort cooling applications in green built environments. Uh, so I would like to understand, you know, what kind of uh, metrics would Selco be, you know, measuring out of the pilot projects that we, you know, it would be doing together in the space. Oh, sure. Nirmita will be taking this. Yeah. Uh, sorry, can you elaborate a little bit more about um, your question itself? Yeah. Uh, so I want to understand, uh, you know, the objective of the pilot project. So, you know, that would be something that, you know, you would be measuring from your side, right? So if that is known to us, you know, then, you know, framing our proposal would be, you know, much, we could be much more clear as to how uh, we would also be aligned to that objective, uh, basically. Uh, so this is an active cooling solution for comfort conditions. Correct, correct. Right? Yeah. So when it comes to building uh, built environments, we, like I was mentioning in my presentation, we have three categorizations. One is you know, building materials itself. The other one is um, applications like cooling solutions. And then the third being any kind of systems that could uh, measure and uh, um, ensure efficiency okay. of that system itself. So, you know, sensor or IoT based sort of like a cooling solution on the... Uh, so for us, uh, when it comes to building design, we, um, I mean, it's sector agnostic, right? So you can look at it from a healthcare perspective, from a workspace, from a household, from an educational facility. So okay. I think for us, the how sort of cross-cutting that application is, is very critical um how sort of whether it's already been tested on the ground because for us um depending on whether it is measured and approved like it has like the relevant uh safety uh, measures in place that that would be i think another layer of um need for this that being said again if there is a, a, a if it's in early stages of development you can directly reach out to us and we can sort of look at it from another partnership perspective as part of this program, we're looking at scalability and ecosystem sort of, um, you know, approach to sort of um, uh, how do you sort of propagate and propel it into different kinds of contexts. So if you're saying that you have a low energy cooling system that you have designed, then how do you sort of um, integrate them into sort of um, core programs at the government level? Um, you know, have 100% of sort of health facilities have, uh, you know, instill that into sort of, sort of their um, uh, core costs of implementation itself. So for us, it's about sort of taking that um, across. So I think for us, uh, it would be very important to understand what phase your technology is in at this stage. And um, at least some test beds, some testimonials, some level of sort of user feedback or mar market feedback that can help us analyze and um, see whether this can be sort of uh, adopted would be very critical. And uh, yeah, stakeholder buy-in is very key actually for um, innovation material uh, um, um, technologies. Understand. And there was also mention of you know partnerships, right? So you were telling that you know you would like the enterprise to come in with a partner. So yeah. what does that mean? What sort of partners are, are you looking for? It's not very critical to come in with a partner, but say I am looking at developing something for you know a, a very low cost, small scale uh, cooling solution for Anganwadi's. Okay. Right. So have you sort of actually deployed it on ground? Have you sort of partnered with the world, uh, a women and child department or an NGO that sort of runs uh, facilities for early uh, child care needs or a private entity that has worked with children with their, you know, um, for as an education or a care space. So if it's sort of tested and sort of partnered with a use case of, of what we're looking or what your proposal is for, then I think that is a, um, that for us is like a, like I was mentioning, the stakeholders and the support that we're looking at um, as being critical to understand. understand. Right. Yeah. And it could be um, another in incubator, it could be different kinds of partners, but basically anyone who's already bought into the idea and is sort of supporting you and taking this program forward. Sure, sure. Got it. Yeah. 
so that's the questions i have you know there are a few specific points but i'd like to you know talk to that separately you know something yeah. yeah and like prashant is mentioning right to us there's also a number that you can uh, call and we can get in touch yeah 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 I'll, um any questions any further questions um queries doubts uh hi uh, mini shakti here so um i just you know had two things of course i have not seen your presentation from the beginning uh i i you know i came in in between uh one uh, so urban cooling at city level if you know there is some work going on uh would this also uh, you know would would this application also support that and uh, would phd research uh, if somebody is doing phd research would phd research be supported so if suppose you know we want to develop a tool mm. for uh, city heat mapping and you know developing yeah. solutions which urban planners can can yeah. use uh, so something like that would yeah, yeah. Would so um yeah when it comes to sort of um what do you call it um, cooling uh, at a sort of larger scale but as um, i think uh, what is more aligned are more sort of decentralized means of cooling solutions so if you're seeing something at a city span might not be necessarily as aligned but if it has components of you know a uh, ward cooling or cluster cooling or a you know, group of um, so something more decentralized is what is more aligned to our programs um that being said um i mean you can definitely sort of uh, register and apply and once you sort of submit you may be able to evaluate the depth um and sure. um uh, while we are code looking at hardware and you know actual implementations being facilitated on the ground if your um, sort of the the tool that you sort of develop enables certain kinds of implementation uh i can give you an example so for example uh, if you're saying that you know heat action plan needs to be sort of looking at deploying uh, cooling solutions in x y z manner on the ground it's like a guideline for like a bbmp in bangalore to sort of deploy then sort of that mm -hmm. is still aligned because it's a toolkit to sort of implement um correct correct, correct. correct. So, yes yes okay okay great great to know that so mm -hmm. i'll i'll be in touch maybe you know i'll take it forward mm -hmm. okay okay thanks Are there any questions at this stage? So then I think we would uh, uh, thank all of you for joining and maybe uh, wrap up the uh, Q and A at this point. Um, our channels are always open. All the emails and the phone numbers that have been shared on our socials. Um, uh, like Prashant was mentioning, uh, everyone who will be shortlisted um, and has already applied and will be applying for the date of fifteenth. Uh, we'll be receiving um, a deck that needs to be sort of filled. And if there is sort of any hand holding required, how to fill, what to fill, um, how do I approach uh, sort of um, uh, the second stage of this competition itself, we would be able to obviously support the entire team over here. And um, I think um, we will be sort of hearing, I mean, if there are sort of more questions, uh, we might be able to do another round on just how to do a stage two sort of submission. but. Um, at this stage, I think, uh, yeah, more communication on the social media will be sort of sent across. Sure. As uh, again, thank you everyone for joining. As we said, this is one platform uh, where we wanted to open up and then also hear and get new ideas, new people, new partners uh, for our work which we are doing, and also our partners who are working with us for them. So, irrespective of what happens in this challenge, how we kind of. Uh, uh, move forward with certain applications whereas with certain application if you are not able to move forward through this challenge because it will have a very specific lens on cooling and on decentralization on scale as members are saying we'll be definitely happy or would be looking forward to still take the conversations forward across our different boards of work because we also as i mentioned have an innovation work team working on innovations which might not be at scale stage right now but if it actually kind of helps in decentralization across those four themes in any way possible, uh, we'll be more than happy. And again, we'll be eager to kind of work uh, together on that. For enterprises, we also, as I mentioned, have incubation programs. So if there is anything required beyond that, uh, 
uh, from the incubation perspective and then uh, the enterprise growth perspective, again, uh, we'll be happy to kind of consider that separately beyond this uh, platform too. Uh, with that, we'll be closing this uh, session right now. Uh, uh, thank you for joining. Do reach out uh, to us through email, through uh, phone numbers which are provided, and then uh, yeah, look forward to the email which we'll be sending soon uh, for the decks and follow, keep following us in our social media channel to know more about this challenge and our work which we are doing. Thank you, everyone. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Take care.